In today's video, we will be looking at an endoscope camera. What's one of those? We'll find out after I've said, roll titles. Welcome to the channel if it's your first time here and welcome back if it's not. Now that's right, in today's video we're going to be looking at endoscope cameras and I don't mean the sort of ones that you go and see your doctor for and, you know, wish you'd never been born. I'm talking about one of these. Yeah, I know it's a box, but we're going to unbox it. Now we've got a few DIY projects planned around the home and I thought something like this would be actually quite useful for it. Now one of the projects we're doing is we're going to think about using the sort of void that's under the stairs to put Dougie's crate in and use some dead space essentially. Now before I start hacking down bits of wall, I thought it might be an idea to drill a small hole and have a little look behind the wall and see what's there. And hopefully we'll be able to create a nice little space for the crate to go. But I want to see what's behind there before we go too crazy and have big ideas. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd get a little endoscope camera so we can explore behind the wall without causing too much damage. And this is the one I've gone for. Now, if you look on Amazon for these kind of cameras, there are literally hundreds of them and they're all from random Chinese brands that you've never heard of before. And uh, this is a Zealtron one and it came in around about 60 pounds which I think is actually quite good for this kind of camera, but we'll see what features it's got once I get it open. But yeah, there are all kinds of different types available. There are some that connect via an app to your phone, and there's also one that I think Super Rod sell. I think it's called a ferret camera, and a lot of electricians use it to put on the end of their Super Rods. That sounds worse than it actually is. And they can sort of look in the ceiling and fish around but it's actually quite big and so you actually have to have quite a big hole to put it through in the first place. Now I got one of these endoscopic borehole cameras because the end of it is relatively small and also this has got a screen on it as well so I don't have to use my phone or connect to some weird Chinese random app and I think this offers video recording facilities which would be quite handy for well you guys when I start playing with it. Now before I unbox this I just wanted to say please do give this video a like right now. Go on, before you forget, because that will help push it out to a wider audience on YouTube and people interested in the similar kind of things that you are will see it and hopefully be interested in it. Yeah, let's uh, get it out of the box and see what it's like. Be the Corsair with Zealtron. I mean, Corsair's like a memory computery brand, isn't it? Don't think it's actually got anything to do with them. <laughs> Okay, well this is a good start. I like things coming in storage cases because it means when I'm not using it, there's something suitable to store it in. So yes, so far so good. And yeah, it's a fairly nondescript case there. Now I've never used one of these before, so you'll probably be learning with me unless you're some sort of expert on random Chinese endoscopic cameras, but I'm a bit worried about you if you are. Well, let's have a look at this bit first. Now, this is the actual camera. See, there's the camera at the end there, and it's actually got three cameras in, so it's got one on this side and one on that side, and that's why I thought it was actually quite a good deal for the £60 that they were asking for. Uh, it's got a USB connector on there. I probably wouldn't try plugging that into your computer, um, but it plugs into the screen device and it's got this sort of semi-rigid cable that you can bend around. But we'll have a little look properly at that in a second. What's in this little baggie? So we've got a uh, USB-A connector to USB-C connector. So the unit itself has got a battery in it so you can charge it up and uh, it can run sort of wireless. We've got a free 32 gigabyte memory card. I probably wouldn't store all my important family photos on this. And uh, we've got this sort of slightly uh, weird sample tube. And inside it, these are some ends for the camera. Okay, so we've got this end here that's got a magnet on. So if you want to reach in and sort of hook onto something and pull it, you can do so with the magnet. And we've got this little hooky guy. 
So if you want to pull on a cable or something to get it out, you can use the camera to find it and then hook on and pull it out. And then we just got this sort of spare ring. Now I think I'm right in saying these ends just screw on to the end of the camera like that. There you go. I suppose this one probably like a blank end to protect the thread. So I'm going to stick that on there now. And here is the meat of the device. Now what have we got? Oh, we've got a little, it looks like an Amazon gift card. I don't think it is an Amazon gift card. It's got a little uh, thank you for buying it and also a support email address, super handy. Please charge for one to two hours to activate the prod, 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 before use. Please read the user manual carefully before use. Okay, well, we'll definitely do both of those things. And here is the manual and it is an industrial endoscope. Nice. Uh, the camera ca cable is replaceable. We provide cameras with a variety of specification, length, diameter, depth of field, and angle of view to meet different inspects and shooting scenarios. I like that. So it says that it's got a 3000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery in there, which can work continuously for up to four hours. I don't know how true that is. I don't think I'm going to leave it on for four hours to test, but we'll get some idea. Yeah, apparently the screen is an IPS display with a resolution of 854 by 480 pixels and the camera resolution is apparently 1080p. Not sure if that's true. It says the video resolution is 1280 by 720, so that's not 1080p. I don't imagine you're going to be filming stuff with this camera and putting it on the big screen like it's some sort of amazing movie. I mean, it might be for some of you. I know there's a lot of weird people that watch my videos. So the front camera has got a 50 to 80 millimeter focal length and the side cameras have got a 20 to 50 millimeter focal length, apparently. And here is the unit itself. So um, I mean, it's got some sort of torch on there on the back with that button there. Got the power on switch here. It's got a microphone in built into it. I mean, that'd probably be good if it works for syncing up the audio when I'm like showing it you how it works later. Um, okay, so it's meant to be this way around. We've got some menu buttons along the bottom here and what goes here. Okay, so we've got our charging connector there. We've got our slot for our micro SD card. Oh look, and the camera goes in the top there. Okay, so let's put the memory card in first. Now I think the endoscope camera end is actually waterproof. This little unit itself isn't, but if you wanted to stick your camera into somewhere damp, um, yeah, it's waterproof. Now, yeah, as it said in the instruction manuals, these actually do come in a variety of lengths. So it's really kind of horses for courses. I think this actual one that I bought is around two meters long which should be more than enough for what I would need. But you know, if you want a slightly longer cable, then they sell them. Nice. <laughs> it's actually filming the uh, monitor that I'm using to look at my overhead camera. That's cool. Um, okay, so let's have a little look, see if we can figure out the menu. Ooh, that's, um, that's gonna get annoying, isn't it? Well, let's put the date correct because it's the wrong date at the moment. Resolution, what's this? Oh, okay, so we can switch between one megapixel and two megapixels. Let's go two. Always go big. That's a really annoying sound. How does one go across to the settings menu? It's not that. Aha. Oh look, beep sound, let's turn that mother hubbard off. Nice. Now how do we switch between cameras? Ah! Ah, <gasps> that's so cool. So that camera is this side and the light is on. And then if we press okay, turns to the top camera and the light comes on. And then if we put that camera on, it's that camera. That is pretty smart. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in the most focused, but it's actually okay. So yeah, it's not, it's not that the camera's bad. 
It's just designed to focus at a shorter distance than you'd normally expect. Hmm, I'm actually uh, pleasantly surprised by that. So if I sort of uh, film around my camera up here, yeah, that's not so bad at all. I'm learning things. So pressing and holding this down arrow flips the image. What does pressing and holding on this arrow do? Oh, okay, it flips it the other way around. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, what does pressing and holding on this button do? Oh, okay, so it allows you to actually watch the footage back on the device. That's quite handy. So that's the video that I just shot of the lens. And I worked out how you can change the brightness of the light on the end here. So if you press the power button on the side, just give it a quick press. Um, and if you look here on this screen, so it's off now, and then one more press, it's level one. Next press is level two. Next press is level three. I mean, I don't notice much difference between that and that, but yeah, well, maybe, maybe a slight difference there. I assume it does the same if you switch cameras. So we're now looking at me and yep, turn the light off. That one, that one, that one, cool. So that's, there's a lot of functionality included in this relatively inexpensive device. And I think I'm right in saying that if you've only got the dual lens version, so not the triple lens version, you can actually see both lenses on screen at once, which I think is pretty smart. But obviously because I've gone for the triple lens version, that's not a thing, but it's not the end of the world. I'm, I think I'd rather have three lenses that I can switch between than have two lenses showing on the screen at the same time. Very nice. Considering there are three lenses in the end of this, and you get this sort of, the actual device here, you actually get quite a lot for your money really, don't you? Yeah, so with that, without that lens collar on, it's about 7.8 mil. I reckon it's probably about eight mil with that lens collar on there. Don't know how flexible this cable is. Yeah, I mean, there's a good amount of flex there really. I don't know if you get it around like a U-bend in a sink, but aside from this sort of initial shaft that's going in, yeah, you, you could actually get this into quite a tiny space. Well, should we do that? Let's um, go downstairs and make a tiny hole for this to go into. Now, can you remember I said that I probably wouldn't store any precious family memories on the SD card? Yeah, I was right about that. As I was setting up to film this section here, it flashed up on the screen of this that there was an SD card error and it just couldn't access the SD card in here. So what I've done is I've taken it out and I've replaced it with the one I use in my microscope, which is a proper SanDisk one. And hopefully that should cause fewer issues. So this is the space where we're thinking of removing this bit of wall so Dougie's crate can go in the void under the stairs. And I've put two eight mil holes, one down here, which is slightly out of the camera's view, and then one over here in this corner. So what we'll do is we can use this and have a little look and see what's behind the wall because well, it would be interesting to see what we're dealing with and whether our plan is indeed possible. So uh, let's start this recording. And what I will do is I will replace me on the screen with uh, what the camera can see. So this is the plasterboard and in we go. Okay, so straight away, you can see there's a cap of something that the builders left behind. It might be the cap of this can over here. Yeah, well, maybe. Could be like a can of WD-40 or something. Might even be a can of drink, who knows? So that shows us some battening that we've got that sort of battens off where the cupboard under the stairs ends. If we push the camera in a little bit further, we can see what we've got on the far wall. I think that is, yeah, that looks to me just like breeze block. I don't know how well it's coming out on the video, but on the screen, 
yeah, there's a bit of breeze block wall. So the far wall isn't plastered, but that's okay. And then you can sort of see on the left of the picture under the stairs. Now, I know you can't change cameras while you're recording. So what I will do is if I stop recording and then press this button, that'll change the camera. So now it's pointing essentially this way. Let's start recording. Yeah, so now we can see the battening that's going along this wall here. And look, actually, I think down there, yep, this is the hole that I've drilled. So it's right next to the batten. So we've got a batten going up here, and then a bit more void. But we can see that the floor is sound. It's just the sort of concrete floor that's underneath our flooring at the moment. So it's all looking pretty good. But obviously we wouldn't have a clue what any of this looks like under here without this camera. So yeah, that's amazing. And now we're looking at the camera on the other side. So it's against this bit of wall here. So I guess, yeah, there's the battening. we can actually see a bit more of the uh, can and also the breeze block wall. I think that's a drinks can, you know. Awesome, so let's go upstairs and we'll finish off this video. Wow, what a cracking bit of kit that is. I think marred slightly by the iffy SD card. I'm actually copying the video and stuff that I took at the beginning of the review from it and putting it on my computer and it is painfully slow, so I would say if you're planning on recording or taking pictures through the device, then chuck out that SD card that comes with it and just get a nice SanDisk one. It doesn't need to be massive. That was just a 32 gigabyte one. So that should be plenty because the video quality, as you've seen, isn't the highest quality. It's like 720p. When it's on this screen, it doesn't really matter. It's perfectly serviceable. <laughs> it's not really designed to be blown up for a 4K TV, which you've been watching it on. So yeah, although it's not the best video quality, when you're looking at it sort of as it's meant to be, live on screen, it's fine. It does the job brilliantly well. This is an amazing product for £60, especially having the choice between the three different lenses. That just makes life so much easier. You can see straight ahead and left and right or up and down, depending the orientation of the camera. But for someone doing electrical work, for example, or if you do car stuff or just general DIY, it's great to have a little tool to just see into small spaces where you wouldn't normally be able to access. And I can see myself using it for a variety of projects around the home. Well, what I'll do is I'll make sure there's a link to the product in the description. And also I'll stick a link to an SD card that you can trust in the description as well. Yeah, I don't think I've got anything else to say. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But for now, it's game over.